Moving on to the equity space here in Nigeria, the All Share Index is currently down in media trade as we speak to Sami Chidoka. He's a director at Planet Capital. Thank you so much, Chidoka, Sami, for taking the time out to join us. We're looking at profit taking sweeping across the NSC. And we saw this yesterday, but then the NSC made a turnaround. But so far, looking at the corporates, we have Seplat again, this time down 13 Naira, Dangode Cement down 2 Naira, 30 Kobo, UACN, and two brewery stocks, NB, Nigerian breweries, and international breweries. What do you think is the sentiment driving trading these days? Because we see the market taking, as we've seen in the last three weeks, one step forward, two steps backward sometimes. Well, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Um, basically, what we've seen in the last, um, say, three weeks, is that the market, um, in terms of weekly performance, hasn't been bad. So we've had in the last three weeks where you had at the end of the week, the market has inched up a bit. That's why we were at over 39,000. And we were expecting that sooner than later, profit taking would start happening. Because what you've seen is where the prices of stocks have inched up and you expect that portfolio investors and people who are actively watching the market will begin to take some of the profit that they've gained. Uh, Seplat, of course, we expected that also. However, we expect that as the market continues to go in the direction that um, we expect it to go this week, that what will happen is people will begin to review their portfolio again and look at, okay, where do we go in? Because if you look closely, look at the banking stocks. The banking stocks, where we, our estimation is that many of the stocks there are underpriced. Um, in terms of when you look at their price to earnings ratio, when you look at the current valuation of those prices, when you do a fundamental analysis of some of the banking stocks, some of them are underpriced. So we expect that people will take that value. And if you look at what happened yesterday, it was the banking subsector that drove the market. Now, taking all of that into consideration, for perhaps those who are playing already or those who are sitting on the outside thinking of coming on into the inside, what view does one have for this market? Is it more, or what's happening right now? Is it more of a long-term view? Is it more profitable to have, to hold a long-term view for this market or to come in and, as we've see, we seen some of the, some activities of the speculators, just, you know, wait for, I don't know, 5, 10 percent and then, you know, take profit and exit? Well, it depends on what your objective is. If your objective is for quick wins, then you have to, you can come in and take the quick wins and well, move But which of it, of this divide, of both of them is most, would be more, more profitable, as it were? to investors if that's possible. Well, as we always say about the capital market, your long-term long -term view is always better, it's always better in terms of um, not being the money market. In terms of the capital market, your long-term view always, always better. However, for, an, for a portfolio manager whose who's immediate aim is to follow the market closely, look at valuations, look at specific stocks that you have identified that have um, a growth a growth trajectory that you've see, that you've that you envisage will happen. You can come in, watch it grow, take your profit, and then look out again what else is in the market. However, that's risky. That's only that's what we advise is only for professional um, traders and asset managers. But for uh, an investor who's looking at, okay, where do I put my money? A retail investor who's looking at this market, a long-term view is always better. Now, I mean, when all else fails, according to equity analysts, the defensive sectors consumer goods, you know, one can always fall back on that. But that hasn't exactly been the case in the last couple of, well, this for the second quarter has been looking good, but in the first part of the year, that wasn't good. So I'm just thinking we're, we still have a rising consumer uh, goods, uh, consumer class, fast moving consumer goods is still, you know, hot, at least for investors. So why isn't the, why hasn't the defensive sector been defensive? As it were. <laughs> I, I, I'm guessing that it's because um, everybody hopes that that's the defensive um, subsector. And so what you've seen is that there's been some bit of overpricing in terms of stocks in that subsector. Maybe apart from PZ, in recent time, many of the other stocks there have been taking a hit. Um, you look at Nestle, um, yesterday wasn't so good. You look at Honeywell, last week it wasn't so good. Because people have, most investors have been looking at those stocks as their defensive stock, as it were. But um, the financial services hasn't been bad. It hasn't been bad in terms of what, what um, the kind of valuations that we're seeing. Well, you don't there. think there's a lot of heartache that comes with holding bank stocks because, this, yes, it's a liquid sector, but then it's so prone to regulatory changes, uh, you know, turbulence. And, we've, of course, we've seen what's going on with the banks. We've seen the earnings come down. We've seen the banks coming up with all kinds of strategies to, to you know, strengthen their growth, uh, their bottom lines, and going into and everybody's going into the retail space mm -hmm. now as a new strategy. So, I mean, for an investor, it doesn't, I mean, giving me so much heartache over <laughs> trying to get returns from banks stocks is it still worth it at the end well for it's good to dimension the subsector okay so you look at q1 results we've seen good results from sterling bank we've seen good results from stambic 
We've seen good results from Diamond Bank. We've seen good results from GT Bank. Not so good result from Fidelity Bank. Not which so good result. Two percent, two percent growth in bottom line. Would you mm -hmm. regard that as a good result? That or perhaps given the present circumstances or expectations after that Sierra hike. Yes. Well, given where they're coming from, you would expect that some quarter-on-quarter -quarter, um, relative valuation that you would expect that what we see from Q1 would be worse off than what we had in Q1 last year, based on the growth in CRR um, from last year even till this first quarter, right? And you and the decline in um, in COT. You expect that all of this will come together and reduce what you see in terms of bottom line for banks. But it hasn't happened for all the banks across board. Some banks, probably what they've done is to price in this to their clients. So you need to look at each bank and look at, okay, what's happening with their loan book? How are they pricing their risk assets? Have they turned off the cost of this to their clients? Have they successfully done that? Have, have they, like you mentioned, banks going retail? Is that where you need to go now to take care of the fact that you know you have 75% CRR on public sector fund and 15% for private sector? So what do you need to do as a bank? Some banks have mitigated it, some haven't. Q1 results have shown that clearly. And so it, it won't be wise to take an helicopter view of a subsector and say, don't go. It, what the wiser thing to do is to look at each stock, each bank, each and decide company, where, how and you decide want to, you how you know, want to weigh play. yourself as a well. But for bank stocks, for a portfolio manager, you know, spreading his risk, should he be overweight, or how does he measure the volume of stocks, bank stocks that he puts in his portfolio in terms of uh, shedding weight or adding more? Well, for one, for anybody who's, I don't think this is his time for you to really be overweight on um, banking stock, really. If for we now. would all do robust forecasts that we still have, you know, that yeah, yeah. for them going forward. True, but you look at, I'll give you an example, look at what happened last year. So you look at some banks with that um, last quarter results, the banks released was good. And then this year, full year results, you now see a different picture entirely. So yes, would we recommend anybody to go um, gung-ho on bank stocks? No. However, what we advise portfolio managers to do is be selective, follow the market, and, and know when to exit and know when to enter. Identify each stock for what it's worth. Don't go with the, don't do a headsman mentality. Everybody's buying Zenith Bank, so I'm buying Zenith Bank. Question is why why are people buying Zenith but Bank? But that is for the institutional investors. They have that expertise. They have you know all the technical know-how as it were. But for the retail investors, many of whom uh, we ha we hear two sides of the story. That many are coming in, many are going out. We don't know which is which. But for those of them who choose to remain, how do they play this market? Given all that, because right now it's all about who has good earnings, who has good you know fundamentals. How do they play that? Having or get that knowledge and play based on that. For retail investors, our advice has always been and will always be is, first of all, seek professional help. There are people who earn a living from trading the market. Um, if, you, if, if I woke up today and decided to become, um, uh, to start doing space exploration and not knowing anything about it, I'd probably fall flat on my face. So for retail investors, our first advice is seek professional help. There are asset managers who can help you. Seek to diversify your portfolio. Um, look for a way so that when you take a hit here, you can balance it up for here. So this is no longer a time, this market is no longer a market where you, you want to go solo as a retail investor. You need help. Except you're knowledgeable. Except you're a knowledgeable retail investor. If I, if I consider myself, if I have a personal portfolio, for instance, and I decide to go by myself, oh, fair enough. But if you're not knowledgeable, seek professional help. There are collective investment schemes around that you can invest in. Some of these collect collective investment schemes have 30%, 40% capital market, a good 10, 15% money market, and then other type of um, securities across board that helps you to average out your loss here, your profit here, and by the time you average it out, you see that you're actually better off. So for the retail investors, what happened um, some five, six years ago when everybody went gung-ho in the market, uh, we don't advise that anymore. Okay, well, going forward for the rest of this week, uh, what are your forecasts? Uh, who or which stocks uh, will make headlines? We've seen the not so or the bittersweet earnings, I call them. But going forward for this week, uh, which stocks uh, do you see investors pitching their tents with? And um, this week, we're still we're still looking at the uh, financial services. This week, um, we still believe that Diamond Bank is a good um, is a good stock. We're looking at it very closely. It's a stock we like. Um, we're looking at Sterling Bank. Uh, we're looking at Access Bank. One of the things that we've seen, I think there's an anticipation for Access and Access Bank and, and Zenith Bank, an anticipation that their Q1 results will be good, and we hope they meet market expectation. Because if you look at what has happened to the stock um, in the last um, few days, it's been those stocks have been trading heavily. People have been buying heavily into that with the expectation that their Q1 results, which haven't come out yet, 
will be good. So we expect that, hopefully, by the time it comes out, um, it will be good. In the consumer um, goods sector, we're still looking at PZ, okay. um, looking good. And uh, Dangote Cement has always been good, and we like it. Um, market didn't react too much to the dividend that was declared. Um, dividend yield of about 3%. Well, if you look at that in light of the fact that banks are doing an average of 6-7% in terms of dividend yield, so you can begin to say, okay, how do I balance my portfolio? Mm -hmm. But look, if you look at it in terms of their industry, not bad. Okay. Well, Sammy, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for talking to us.